Hey everybody, this is Dr. Stephanie Rimka coming to you on a Sunday from my home. And something um, that's been up in the office a lot this last week, I thought, I just need to tell you guys about it. And I'm uh, getting continually frustrated with this concept in practice. And so I want to give you, tell you a little bit, a little bit about that frustration and offer a solution because there are so many possibilities for people to have better care when they're dealing with um, any type of mental illness, especially when we have medications involved, very powerful psychotropic medications where we can have some very scary negative reactions. Okay, so here's my little bit of a rant, perhaps. Um, mental illness is a real thing. It's getting more and more common. I am concerned about the normalization of some of these issues that, you know, it's, it's becoming common that children are anxious and having panic attacks, first, second, third grade. It's becoming common that school is a traumatic experience for children. It's becoming very common that children are obese, that they have diabetes, adult onset diabetes. We've changed the name because it's so common now, something that children never used to get is, you know, 30% of all kids in Georgia under 18 are diabetic. This is becoming a huge deal. So it's not about me trying to shame mental illness in any way, but I'm very concerned about the normalization of it, as if panic attacks in second graders is completely acceptable, as if putting nine-year-olds on SSRIs is just how we do it. They just need a little Prozac, as if um, attention and concentration issues all means somebody has a fall asleep brain that needs methamphetamine to speed it up. Because that is just categorically incorrect. And there are reasons these symptoms are rising. I'm not going to get into that right now. My frustration is how can any doctor of any sort treat an organ without looking at it? So if I were to go into an endocrinologist, and I, they deal with hormones, and I was to complain that I was tired and um, constipated and foggy brain and um, my hair was falling out, they would think, hmm, sounds like a thyroid disorder. What would they do? They would run some labs. They would look and see, is there something abnormal that explains those symptoms with what they know how to do? That makes sense. If I go into a cardiologist and I'm complaining of chest pains and shortness of breath and other things, you know, they're going to run labs to look at cardiac function. They're going to run blood labs. They're going to run probably an EKG. They're going to uh, maybe do ultrasounds. They're going to do imaging, okay? They're going to do functional tests to see if there's damage, and they're going to do imaging. When it comes to the – and that before they prescribe or do anything. Because if they didn't, it would be considered malpractice. You don't just walk into there and they're like, oh, we'll try some estrogen. Oh, it didn't work. Well, here, take some testosterone. Oh, really? Well, try some T3. Oh, that didn't work too. Well, let's just do T4, progesterone. You know, let's see how you feel. See how that works and come back if it doesn't work. Really? Nobody does that. But that happens in mental illness all the time. Oh, you this, try this drug. Oh, you that, try this drug. Oh, you that, try this drug. That didn't work, do this drug. So the field of psychiatry has seemed to miss the boat on testing and looking at imaging. And, um, you know, it's just they're not taught to do it. And the reality is there is neural imaging. You know, there's EEG, what we do, there's spec scans, there's functional MRIs, there's all of that. There's genetic testing, there's um, functional um, medicine. There you go. Sorry, the dog is doing a cameo. There you go. Thank you. Um, it's real life, people. It's real life. So uh, there are real functional medicine ways of looking at the brain and how it's affecting the pillars of brain chemistry and how that results in uh, abnormal behavior or things we might diagnose as mental illnesses. And I am frustrated with the fact that so many people who are treating brains and mental illness know nothing about brains. They don't know 
really how the neurotransmitters are made. They don't do any testing. It's just like throwing something against the wall based on some clinical signs and symptoms. Well, you get it right sometimes. Why I'm frustrated with this and why it's come up is there are things you can do, right? We record brain imaging and we look at this. Other pieces we add to it, we run blood labs and urine tests to get another piece of it. Um, another piece we do, and I haven't been doing it as often as I think I'm going to start doing it, is a very specific genetic um, assay that just takes a, a sweep of some cells inside the cheek, so it's very non-invasive and doesn't hurt, and you send that off um, to this company, and we get to see your genetic mutations or your genetic personalities and how these psychiatric medications, whether they're stimulants, uh, antidepressants, uh, mood stabilizers, anticonvulsants, sleep medications, and pain meds run through the very specific genetic um, codes that you have that determine the amount of enzymes you have to process. So what does that really mean? What it means is we get tremendous information to accurately diagnose and therefore accurately treat someone without guessing. You can get a straight up list of every medication and go, well, they can't have these because we have an increased uh, probability of, of an adverse reaction. So use these instead. Oh, and by the way, they respond really, really strongly to omega-3s. They're gonna really need that. Oh, exercise is critical for this person. It's gonna majorly change their cognition and working memory because it's from their brain-derived neurotropic factor, the BDNF. You don't need to know all those details. That's what the doctor is for, right? That's what people like me are here to do for you. And if your doctor isn't doing that, I suggest you find a new one. So I'm gonna go through a really, it's, it's up real big right now for me because I had a few um, kids this week that I did their assay. And so the company I use is called Genomind. And I'm gonna put this stuff down in the comments because I think it's critical you guys do your research and you have more information before you medicate yourself or your children. So these are two young teenagers um, that I just got some back on and one we're looking at, you know, is he gonna need some medication or the one who's on a ton of medication and has been psych hospitalized twice already um, in early teens. So like what, what kind of information can I, you, you find out? So I'm gonna show you like an actual, um, report, and I'm not fancy with split screens and webinars and all that stuff yet. I'm going to get there. But this is what an actual report looks like. And I'm going to have the, the links down here. And it's kind of intense, but literally we're going through like gene codes very specific to what they are. The serotonin transport, the calcium channels. I, we look at metabolism, how fast somebody does something, um, dopamine receptors, so many, so many things. Okay. And then you end up with a list, very, very specific, telling you like which medications, like you, these are good to use, these are not, we can do this instead. And these, you know, you need to be really careful. Like, and if they're on these medications, this is, they're gonna have a reaction probably, and here is why. Um, Gentle Mind is probably, you know, for me, I use it because I think it's the best. It's the most researched, scientifically validated. There are a lot of assay companies right now. It's becoming very trendy to do genetic testing for this. So I understand psychiatrists being skeptical because there are some companies that are just kind of pulling out nonsense to try and make it. Gentle Mind only includes anything that is very much researched, published in the data, and we know for sure the studies have shown, a meta-analysis has shown, this type of allele combination doesn't respond well to this. This type responds well. They're not playing around with silly things like, um, you know, is your kid gonna be a good soccer player? It's not about that. It is very much looking at meds so people can be treated initially appropriately and not have to go through bad reactions and not have to go through um, being tinked out from the med, not have to go through psychotic moments from a med, not having to be hospitalized from, from a med, or not taking things that simply just don't work, okay? So this one case in particular, you know, it was so illuminating to me um, on this young boy, what I was able to find out was kind of a missing piece that, um, is gonna make all the difference in the care he's gonna get. And I really needed this piece of information. And I've been trying to get the piece of information. And right here, genetic testing showed me a very specific thing with calcium and sodium signaling in his brain, where I thought, hmm, is this a seizure? Is this what I'm seeing? The EEG's not showing it. 
um, very well, but we, I'm clinically seeing something. And right here, this information is an absolute game changer. And then the other kid that I got, I mean, it's, it's, it's mind blowing to me what I found out. With a simple test that I'll tell you right now, they take insurance. Um, we don't bill or anything like that. You're gonna do it directly through them. Um, the max anybody pays for this, I don't, some psychiatrist recently told one of my patients, well, I, I believe in it, but it costs $4,000. I went, excuse me? Clearly he knows nothing because the test max out of pocket is $300. They take insurance and I've had many of my patients pay $0 because their goal is to work with you. So if, if you have any financial hardship, it's gonna go somewhere from zero to 25 or 50 or something out of your pocket. Medicare, Medicaid, completely covered, it will be zero dollars for you, okay? Um, and we run those people through this. So to get the test, that's what goes on. You need to come into a licensed office, someone like me, but I'll have the link down there and you can look for a practitioner where you are. So if you're not in Atlanta, you know, there's other people here, there's me, there's other places. If you, there's nobody near you though, you can come get it from me. We will ship it to you. Like, this is where I'm at with this now. This is really, really important. People are on these psych meds and are about to be medicated or whatever and want to get better results. So another one is a um, young girl. It's on three different medications. Two are highly contraindicated. And after, you know, it's like it's so obvious talking to the doctor of psychopharmacology at the lab. It's like, no wonder she's been psych warded. Like, she went from this diagnosis to that diagnosis, then to bipolar, then to da 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 it's because she's been medicated completely wrong and things that are triggering even more manic episodes because they're altering her brain chemistry and things that she should not be taking. And there's alternatives. It's like, don't take this one, take this one, right? And it shows you that clearly. We can also go online once we have your results and you're uploaded. I can go specifically into the portal, put you in, put exactly the medication combination and see if there's any interactions between everything. And it'll tell me the low risk and how to change everything. So this is available. If your psychiatrist is not doing these types of things, I really say, think you should consider looking for one that would. So I use gentlemind.com uh, and I'm gonna put the links down there. This is, uh, you, again, you get a really nice report, lots of information, plus that online portal where the doctor has access to um, Put in some of the things so i was able to look at this patient put in the things i want to put in and i can even add like what is cannabis going to do to this this and that because some people are like well no wonder this one smokes weed all the time and they're taking boom boom and boom that actually increases the serum levels and increases the chance of uh, ab reactions we also can look at what does smoking do smoking is an inducer in a certain gene code enzyme it's like oh if they're, they're a smoker and they take this look out you have to change the doses in response because it induces a different pathway there's a lot of things involved excuse me, involved with that. So this is how I feel about it. It, it is so impactful and so illuminating this week for a couple people in particular that I'm going to be able to help their psychiatrist change their meds. And I'm desperate to hope their psychiatrist is going to do a consult with the lab for free on my account for them that we can change these meds and get much better results combined with what I'm doing in my office. So I think everybody should be able to get this if they're considering, um, if you're taking a psych med, uh, of any sort or even a pain med, I want you to be able to get it. So this is what I'm going to I'm do. And um, my office manager, Karen, doesn't know I'm doing this and she's going to probably maybe kill me. I don't know. So just so you know, like I'm the doctor boss, but Karen is the boss of me when it comes to my schedule and um, things like my prices. So any of that you deal with with her. She's really nice though. And you schedule with her and you talk to her and she's great. So this is what I'm going to do, Karen, because I want everybody to have it. So I'm going to run a little special through October, you know, not be dragging this in into mid November, you guys like get on it. Okay. Cause we're, you know, we get a lot of calls and it's more work for her and all of this stuff, but I normally have an intake, um, fee for somebody coming in and being assessed by me really quickly and getting the kit from my office and me signing off. I'm going to waive that fee. Okay. It's going to be the free because I'm, kind of pissed right now. So I want people getting better and I'm pissed that they're not getting better because they're being drugged the wrong way. Um, so we're gonna do no intake fee. What you're gonna need though is your diagnosis code from your psychiatrist. Whoever is giving you the medication, you have a very specific code and the insurance needs that exact code. They want the things to be consistent so they're gonna pay for it. Um, basically you'll come into the office and you, you know, come and get the kit. We'll make it really, really simple. It's no big appointment with me. Um, We'll sign off. 
on the paperwork, give you the thing, you'll send it into the lab, you'll deal with the money and insurance and everything with the lab directly, the results will come back to me. And so I can, we can just email you the results and you can take that and read it and deal with it. I think it's, you know, very well done and has enough self-explanation that you can at least follow the drug lines. Like, okay, I'm on this, it's not good, just switch to this, right? But if you want some additional help, and interpretation and some of my time and expertise. I'm willing to, what I'm gonna do is do um, half price for my follow-up consult. I don't require anybody to do a follow-up consult. You can get the lab and you can have the results. I'm not gonna explain anything to you and it just is what it is. Take it to whoever you want. But if you want the follow-up, I'm gonna do half price on a 30 or 60 minute uh, visit through October. Okay, I'm not rolling this into November because November and December we're gonna get real crushed, real busy with some other stuff. So. I just feel it's this important. I, I am um, shocked at some of the things I see and then some of the medications that put a child then into a psych ward with no acknowledgement by the person who prescribed that medication that that's what actually caused it and then they're put on another medication to deal with the, now they're, these hot and cold symptoms they're having and it just goes on and on. And had you, had you done something really simple and go, they shouldn't be on that. They should be on this. I mean, if you're going to do medication, at least do it right. How can you treat the organ without looking at it? So genetic testing is, again, it is a probability. It's not full-blown always the way because epigenetics are involved. We can change our gene code. Um, but when it comes to things as powerful as psychotropic medications, I think you need to get all the data before you let somebody just throw stuff at you. And this is a good one. And any psychiatrists that are out there, I highly encourage you to please go to their website, meet with them, get them to come to your office. They'll do it for free. Go through some webinars. It's, they're astounding. They are highly knowledgeable, amazing. Um, it's been incredibly useful for me in practice. And I've just been recommending it. And it's always an option. And I just try to save people money. But now I'm just like... I think I might need to get this done on almost everybody if they're coming in on some meds or we're considering it because it helped open something up so strongly um, in these two kids that I think it's going to be a complete game changer in how the rest of their lives play out. So there's that. I'll have the links. I'm running that special. Get on it. Call Karen. Email her. Go to the website. You can go to the Start Here button and you... Um, book of like a free consult and that's the best way to do that um, and you'll get on Karen's schedule for how to talk to you and we'll get somebody to call you <clears throat> and speaking of which I'm looking for a full-time front desk so if you're in Atlanta um, you can uh, fax us or send us a letter of your don't email I'll tell you that right now um, but I'm looking for somebody so uh, I'm throwing that out there as well because we're getting we can't keep the phones answered have a good one, guys.